Hello Internet, welcome to Player TV and so forth. I'll cut to the chase. This is a Gigabyte B450MS2H. I only picked it up for just over 60 quid. It is in a box. It's still sealed in the box. Let's change that. So, my editor's going to shout at me if I don't go over the features. So, we see Smart Fan 5, so it's got fan control. Uh, VR Ready, now that sounds like it's just sort of marketing, right? VR Ready is not just marketing. It means that the USB ports actually have enough bandwidth that if you have something that has all these base stations for body tracking, you can actually plug those in and they'll work. So that does mean something. Uh, RGB Fusion, I find that interesting. This is a budget board, right? This cost me £62 something, I think. So that means it has an RGB header, surely. So I'll be interested to see that. We'll find out together. Um, this is a fun little sticker. It is a sticker. AMD Ryzen 3000 desktop ready. So that's good. It should have BIOS F, I want to say F40 on it. Um, won't be able to tell that by looking, but still. So, we're in the box. All cardboard packaging, no bigger than it needs to be, so that's nice. So what have we got in here? We have two SATA cables, one right angle, one straight by the looks of it, um, in a plastic bag. Not ideal, but what is that? Recycling 4. I cannot recycle this plastic bag where I live. That's a pity. Oh well. IO shield. Basic IO shield. That one I can recycle. That's nice. And that bit of cardboard is attached. So, that's the motherboard. And, ah, cardboard. Don't need that. So we have a multilingual installation guide. It's always nice to have. Uh, what do we have here? We have the user's manual, which is... Is that it? Okay, this is the usual user's manual, apparently. I wonder if there's a longer version on the website. That's not very long. Um, anyway. Go to Gigabyte's website for detailed information on hardware installation, BIOS configurations and driver installation. So this is not the user's manual, this is a bit of paper. Technically a user's manual would be a bit of paper. Um, but this, this is a summary, that's the word I'm looking for, a summary. Uh, what's this? This is in French by the looks of it. Look like French to you? What have we actually got here? Okay, so this is a slightly longer... No, no, that's the same. That's, that's the same manual as this, it's just starting... In, no, no, that is completely different. What am I on about? Okay, we have a sort of French quick installation guide that's generic by the looks of it, Intel and AMD platform. Don't know how I missed that, it's because I'm rushing, that's why. driver disk. Lots of people make jokes about, oh, don't need that, throw that away, um, like I just did with the cardboard. Now, this is useful. I know a lot of people don't have CD drives. Some people do. Some people are not necessarily online, believe it or not. This can be useful. We are online, however. Funny joke. Ha <laughs> ha. Okay. So, let's have a look at the board itself. It's in an anti-static bag. The bag says Gigabyte on it. That's good. It'd be a worry if it said something else. Let's get that open if we can. And this is the bit where I make myself look like a massive prat because I can't open an anti-static bag. It's got a tiny bit of cell tape there, so I just need to. Hopefully that will do it. Yep, there we go, there we go. Okay, static safety precautions, right? Always wear an anti-static wrist strap. But if you don't, it is helpful if you have a big lump of metal to touch, like this, okay? Big lump of metal, that absorbs the static charge, that does help.
this is the board. This is what you all came for. Ta-da. So, big chunky heatsink here. I like that. Um, looking at the voltage regulate. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We can count. Now, counting chokes doesn't always give you the number of phases. But I've done some research on this board. I can tell you it is a four plus three phase. So we have our four phases for core there, and then we have our one, two, three, four SOC just there. Uh, Gigabyte have laid it out a bit in a bit of a funny, cute way. So it looks like you've got a five phase. It's a four phase on core. Um, two memory slots. So you're limited on memory capacity, but that means there's one DIMM per channel. That memory layout is better for overclocking in theory. What else have we got? We've got our M.2 slot just there, PCI Express X1, X16, there's the chipset heatsink, another X1 down there. Now we have our four SATA ports, but that positioning, bit off if you ask me. If you've got a big GPU in there, you think, you're going to be able to use maybe two of those ports, but you know, it's a budget board, it's very cheap. On the back, we see nothing of note. So, IO. We have display out, we have VGA, VGA, DVI, and HDMI. We have PS2 mouse and keyboard, which is interesting. Two USB 2.0 ports, which I say while pointing at the three ports. Two USB 2.0 ports, four USB 3 ports, and audio. So, there was some discussion of RGB. So, I'm just going to have a bit of a look here in front of the camera. Can I see any RGB headers? No. Um, oh, no, no, here we are. That header there, LED CPU, that's labelled. If I bring that in, can you see that? Not really, I can try. Um, so that header there, that will connect to AMD's uh, Wraith Prism RGB callers and the like, and that will give you RGB. So, why do I have this board? Why are you currently watching an unboxing of this board? Well, you remember I mentioned the memory layout, okay? Two slots, one per channel, and that means that the traces are as short as they can possibly be. Uh, it means that you don't have any extra weird, um, they're called reflections going on, where what happens is the signal gets sent out from the socket and it goes to the memory slot, right? If you've got two slots, it goes from the socket to both memory slots in the channel, goes up one and comes back, but it also goes up the other and then bounces back from there. You don't want that, that's not good. So you eliminate that by having just one slot per channel, so there's one channel, two channels. And there is an overclocking competition going on at the moment. Um, it's the Hardware Bot Cheapest Chips competition uh, for the AMD 3000G Athlon. Bonus unboxing. We have manual. Bigger manual, cooler. This cooler will be very, very familiar to anyone who's used an AMD processor in the last oof, decade. This is the same 65 watt cooler that came on the old Athlon X2s. So, yeah, can't fault it, it's cheap. This is a cheap processor, it's cheap as chips. There's the processor itself. In all its glory, we have an Athlon sticker, we have the processor, and we have no end of complaints about the fact that I have the camera pointed down and that makes it really difficult for me to angle things right to the lens. So, the idea is, this processor, this motherboard, I've got some memory, hopefully one DIMM per channel, it should overclock reasonably well. Uh, I've got some liquid nitrogen, so watch out for that, and I'm going to see if I can get some decent scores. Wish me luck.